Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weather Channel. I'm back from my holiday. I'm back from Whitby. If you saw my community post, go and have a look. I'm back though. We're back and there's some interesting things happening in the forecast. So, um, today we're going to have a look at the latest from the models for the next couple of weeks, which will take us again to the middle of March. Or just after the middle of March, I should say. We'll have a look at the main models, so the GFS, the ECM and the GM and its ensembles for the next couple of weeks. See what the trends are and probabilities for the next couple of weeks. How many times can I say next couple of weeks? Uh, we're going to have a look at the strat data first because it does look pretty good at the moment and I'll show you why. So we're going to start with the GFS, it's the 6Z run. This is the latest run. As you can see, that warming is over from the 11th of March. Um, we have that warming gathering pace over the North Pole. That's pushing to the polar vortex at its roots, which is just over in the Atlantic, but way up in our atmosphere. And as you can see, it's been stretched. So it's been stretched to its absolute limits. And eventually... By the 13th, 14th of March, it's a split. So one lobe's going into um, Canada and North America, and the other lobe's going into Western Europe. Um, and as you can see, this warming is sustained and is quite strong, which is definitely a sudden stratospheric warming. It looks quite, quite a strong sudden stratospheric warming as well. However, the details need to be exactly nailed on. So as you can see, it tries to reform itself. So the, um, the strat tries to reform itself, or the polar vertex tries to reform itself. However... There's this, another warming gathering pace again over Siberia, pushing into that polar vortex. It's not really going to um, reform itself back, I would assume anyway, um, because it's it's too weak um, at this stage. And as, as we go through March into April, the polar vortex begins to power down, lose its strength um, going into the spring months. So it does begin to weaken naturally. It's a natural cycle. Now, if we move on to the ECM charts, I'm just going to change screens. There we go. You can see this is the ECM ensembles for the runs last night. As you can see, they are dropping it down to minus 10 with the zonal wind. So they are all sending it into reverse. So quite a good support. Even when it begins to recover, it's still um, an SSW level um, continuing through the rest of March into the start of April. Now, this red line is the natural trend of the strat, um, or the polar vortex, and the zonal mean winds. Um, in our atmosphere, well, in our stratosphere, and as you can see, that's the general trend. So it does weaken towards, you know, going negative um, as its power, as it naturally powers down through spring into summer. Uh, but we are below that line. We are keeping it negative, which does increase the chance of blocking gathering pace. So that, I just wanted to show that data off. So that there is quite a high chance of a sudden stratospheric warming occurring now. Um, it looks pretty good. If we have a look on the um, weather is cool website which is a funny name for a website i think then you can see the polar vortex the probability of an ssw from the gfs ensembles is 100 percent so pretty definite that we will see a zonal wind sun suspect warming the intensity again needs to be nailed down but it looks quite strong let's move on to the models then Right then, so we'll start with the GFS, the 6Z run, the latest run. Uh, we've got high pressure sat just to the south, low pressure centred towards Iceland and Greenland. We're bringing in the wind from a relatively pleasant southwesterly. So as I'm recording this at 12 o'clock, it's 10 degrees, so feeling pretty nice out there. Uh, winds wind from the southwest, and we've got some re relatively average upper air temperatures, so not feeling too bad. Those southwesterly westerly winds will continue, and they actually come from quite a mild source from Spain, France, and Portugal, bringing in the wind from the southwest. However, by the 7th of March, we turn more unsettled. Still mild, bringing in the winds from the southwest, but low pressures out to our to our west as well, um, drawing up some very mild air, so it could turn quite mild for a time, but also more wet as well, especially in the west and southwest, according to the GFS, with this low going into France and Spain, and on that northern edge could be a bit of rain. Um, however, this is a new trend within the models. Around the 11th of March, high pressure establishes itself over Greenland. Now, this is not... Uh -uh, is not is sorry about that is not a response to the sun stratospheric warming the lag time if if, if you are new around here the, the lag time uh, between an ssw occurring and the effects is about two weeks we're not expecting any impacts until around the end of march start of april so this is a push of high pressure towards greenland and tries to drag in some colder air however we don't have much to access uh, with the GFS run because before that we were very mild and the Atlantic's kind of has more dominance um, but we do bring in some cooler air from the east it will feel quite chilly but again remember the time of year it's not going to feel that cold temperatures at the surface still getting seven eight nine degrees you need a bitterly cold air mass to see proper cold air in but some of the ones do develop that 
Now, with the GFS, it turns back more southwestly, but interesting to see a cold snap developing. This has been a new trend within the models recently. Um, but it is it does break it down quite quick, and we bring in southwesterly winds at the end, turning more mild, wet, and windy. Now, the GM next um, is very similar for the next few days, with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, and winds in from the west-southwest, turning t feeling quite mild, then, to, then going more southerly for the weekend. That high pressure builds more strongly to our west and begins to drag in some cold air from the northeast. And as you can see, the minus five line is getting into central and northern and eastern England. So feeling pretty cold there. We've got a block out in the Atlantic or just over to our west. See, keeping it quite dry um, in the north, but maybe a few showers in the, the south and east. And some of them could even be a little bit wintry. Now again, look at the upper air temperatures. They are cold, very cold actually. Um, but the temperatures at the surface are freeze to 7 degrees. That's not going to produce snow. But the only chance you'd see of seeing snow is in the overnight hours when um, you know when the sun's gone. Um, because if, that sun, if the sun comes out, it brings up the temperatures really quickly, even with cold air masses. Overnight, though, 1s, 2s and 3s are possible. So you could even see some patchy snow in parts um, during this period. And then the ECMWF finally, again, very similar pattern for the next few days. High pressure builds out to our west, out towards Greenland, and brings in some cold air from the east northeast. Starts out very mild, start, goes very cold. Um, it does actually go quite cold as well. However, it again topples that high quite quickly, and a ridge that sits out to our west, keeping it quite cold and frosty. A lot of frost with this, uh, with these cold air masses aloft. Um, then, however, it breaks down really quick, brings in mild south southwesterlies. Uh, to the end of the run. So a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, if we have a look at the um, temperatures with the ECM and we go to when that cold snap is, you see the daytime temperatures are not too bad, 6, 7, uh, but the overnight temperatures could drop below freezing at times. But that is below average. The 6, 7, 8 degrees is below average for the time of year, but it's not exceptionally so. It's not no beast from the east or anything like that, or beast from the northeast. Um, it's not too extreme. Now we'll go to uh, Birmingham to illustrate this quite well this is the gfs ensembles for the next couple of weeks you can see um, i'm going to zoom that in actually Ooh. <laughs> um, so for the next couple of weeks we are starting off above average for the next um for, for the next week turn it feeling quite nice and pleasant however you can see that there's a significant drop in the temperatures to around average or slightly below from the 10th onwards um, and with this, you can see that they are dropping below. And there are quite a few colder runs in there. Again, not excessively cold. But yeah, there are a few colder feeling runs in there. Um, mixed bag, though. If we have a look at the snow row, however, there's not much there. There's not much going on. However, if we go to the ECMWF ensembles, the midnight runs, you can see, if I move that along like a plum, and there we go, <laughs> starting off well above average. But then there is a more significant and substantial drop from the ECM. Definitely going for it a bit more. Uh, with these runs dropping to about minus 3 on average. But there are some quite cold runs in there. Dropping to between minus 5 and minus 8. And there's also a few milder anomalies in there. But the, the option there is more favoured towards a cooler or colder scenario. If we have a look at the 2 metre temperatures. You can see this is for Birmingham. They are on the decline with the ECM. They are dropping them from... 8 to 9 to 10, 11 degrees, possibly a little bit higher um, in, in your cities, so maybe even 13s, 14s by the 8th of March. However, there is a quite quick drop-off, some even bringing in temperatures below freezing overnight, in overnight hours when, um, if there's, um, if the winds are, are light um, and they drop, then it could go quite frosty overnight in places. It's not great for farmers, I guess, if, um, if you're wanting your milder weather, but... Temperatures are going down to 5, 6 degrees, so again, feeling chilly, but not too bad for the time of year, I guess. Um, but yeah, something to watch out for. So could we see a cold snap? Yes. Um, do the synoptic patterns line up for that with the um, with the runs today? Just about, yeah. So um, we'll see how it develops, but I think there is the potential there for something a bit cold to move in. And we're still looking at the end of the month. I'll keep you posted on all of that. Thank you all very much for watching today's video. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe. We're one away from 1.55k. Goodbye, everyone.